Thank you for giving me the chance to talk about high throughput microplastics identification and characterization based on wide field and QCL IR microscopy. I'm Matthias Gordian from MG Optical Solutions, and I would like to present a, a collaboration between Alfred Wegner Institute on Helgoland and Sebastian Klimke Gunnar Goertz and Jeremy Roulette from Daylight Solutions in San Diego. A short remark up front. The majority of the work, such as organizing the measurements and evaluating literally more than 90 million spectra, was performed by Sebastian Prümke from Alfred Wegener Institute on Helgoland. Please let me give you a short outline of the talk, very short introduction. I will present as well very shortly the technical realization of this microscope and then come to the results and compare that with other techniques such as FTIR and Raman and then come to the conclusions of my talk. Microplastic particles are ubiquitous. They are present even in the remotest areas of the world. And in order to investigate the effects on biosphere and humans, we have to characterize them chemically in order to see the toxicity. We have to characterize them as well in shape and size in order to judge how deep they go into the body. And we have to characterize them in counts and statistics in order to know how much microplastics are in the world. The accuracy of statistics scales with the amount of data available. So there is a need for high throughput measurement procedures in order to be sure that our models are precise. Please give me a short introduction into the system, how it's realized, how we achieve this throughput. We use a light source which is called QCL or quantum cascade laser, which gives you five orders of magnitude more photons per square millimeter compared to an FGIR glow bar or compared to a synchrotron. And we can use that to speed up our measurements by shorter exposure times and even more by putting more pixel and distribute all the photons on more pixels so we parallelize the process and achieve 230,000 pixels roughly compared to 16,400 pixels with an FTIR. So we talk about a factor of 16. In other words, with a glow bar, the spectrum is white and fluffy. Here, we use a laser and this laser is the key because we compress the photons to one single wavelength and get the best signal-to-noise ratio. Here's how it works. We use a laser source as an illumination. It goes through the samples into the lens onto the microvolumeter, and we take one capture per wavelength. So that is a big advantage compared to FTIR. We take one capture at one wavelength. Then move the laser to the next wavelength, take another capture. And all this stack of captures are put together onto a data cube. And then we drill through one pixel. And on this one pixel, we get, of all the captures, of course, we get a spectrum. One capture leads to monochromatic layers, which would allow us to identify with strong absorbers at very special wavelengths, which is not possible with FTR or Raman. And it allows us to drill through all the pixels and get the chemical information at that very pixel. And that is what you see here, the color-coded area. And here you see the species and that can be achieved um, in one minute for a data cube of 220,000 pixels. Please let me come to the results of rapid identification and characterization, which is probably the most interesting part for you. We measured interfering materials such as uh, beeswax, low density PE and polypropylene because they appear in uh, environmental probes. And you can see, especially in the range between 1500 and 1100, a strong difference between these two artifacts. 
Secondly, we tried to measure synthetic polyamides and natural polyamides. And you can see as well strong differences in the spectra as the natural polyamides have not as pronounced features than the synthetic ones. Very often it is discussed if we can distinguish between cellulose acetate and natural cellulose. And as you can see here as well, we see strong differences in, in the spectra as well in the region from 1400 to 1100 waveform numbers. So all in all we see we can do that. Now let's focus on the cross-validation of natural polymers. You see here a long list of polyethylene, polypropylene, polymethylene. Uh, you see on the other hand side the assigned polymer clusters. Ideally, it would be a 100% line. For polyethylene, we achieved 100% assignment. For polypropylene, a 96% hit rate. All that goes down to 70, 50, 60%, depending on the area. But please let me as well highlight um, a limitation of this technique. We need light. Despite all the photons we have, we need light. And you see here that's coal. Through coals, there is no light. So the coal we cannot detect, but other polymers we can distinguish. Now let me come to size and shape. Here we see the environmental center on an anodisc filter. On the right hand side you see here the polymers which are color coded and can be annotated to the particles in the measurement. This was measured in 36 minutes and the dimension to give you an idea is 12 times 12 millimeter. To give you an example, this is the size of the filter and this is the color-coded material mapping uh, which we achieved. So what you see here is um, polyethylene, if you compare it, color-coded, polypropylene and uh, silicone here. What we see as well, each pixel has the size of 4.2 times 4.2 microns with a low mag lens and you see an excellent image quality. I will come back to that as later because that is important for the statistic and the counts. For the statistic and the counts, we compared here the counts of particles depending on size classes. And what you see there is that the particles above 50 are very similar to FDIR. The particles smaller than 50 microns are similar to the Raman system. And that is very important because it's probably due to the excellent uh, image quality of the QCL system, which would allow us to benefit even more from the high speed of the system because for particles below 50 microns, we can get very good results in much faster, much shorter time frames. Please let me show you how fast you get a result. This took about 60 seconds. Just to give you an idea how it feels to measure with an FTIR. And now with Raman. And now let me come to the conclusions. QCL IR microscopy can speed up measurements by a factor of 10 compared to an FDIR. To give you an example, we can measure 12 times 12 millimeter environmental sample in anodisc filter in 36 minutes only. The spectra are very similar to FDIR. So all algorithms can be more or less applied to annotate the materials to the spectrum. And the polymers can even be distinguished together with interfering materials. So that gives us as well a very good confidence of our measurements. 
Furthermore, size and shapes can be precisely measured, uh, which have an impact on how much the microplastic particles will enter the body and to which organs. Furthermore, counts and statistics can be applied as well. Results for small particles below 50 microns are more similar to the Raman system, which is by far slower than um, FDR as well as QCLIR, and very similar to FDR for particles above 50 microns. So, altogether, we can speed up the throughput to the necessary level in order to get enough data sets for boosting and the modeling of the distribution of microplastics in the world. So finally, please let me come to the acknowledgements. I would like to say thank you to my co-worker Sebastian Krümke and Gunnar Goertz for developing Simple, doing all the data analysis. I'd like to thank Markus Bach and Nick McKay roberts for performing the measurements. I would like to thank the Alfred Wegener Institute and Daylight Solutions for um, letting us use the Spiro microscope. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions.